Come join us in the kitchen as we take you along for a freeze-drying frenzy. We're doing everything from dog food to nothing bunt cakes. We're going to do some fluffer nutter. We're going to do some Thai mango porridge smoothies. You name it. We're going to show you the hits and the flops. So come join us. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Kelly's Prepping Kitchen. I am so excited to be included in Freeze Dried February. Angela with the Inquisitive Farm Wife. You will want to go over and follow her channel. She's the one hosting this collaboration and she's the one that's got all the details on the giveaway that's coming up. She will be the one you want to pay close attention to on March 6th at 6 p.m. Central Time for the grand giveaway. Also want to make sure to give a shout out to those who are giving away these prizes. One being Harvest Right. They are going to be giving a 50% off coupon on a freeze dryer. Or if you already have a freeze dryer and you don't necessarily want a second one, they will give you $500 as part of their prize. Freeze Drying Supplies is donating to this collaboration. You can go follow the YouTube channel Live Life Simple. That's live.life.simple. And that's his company, and he is the go to guy for freeze drying knowledge. Avid Armor and Four Jars will also be giving away prizes. I will put all that information in the description box below. So let's get this show started. I was just looking in the refrigerator, and I have four of these fresh pet. It's for your dogs. Like this. This may be the most random batch of freeze-dried things to date. It felt just like an episode of Guy's Grocery Games. We were just going around the kitchen going, let's do this, let's do this, so there's not enough room. We just improvised. We were going to put our 97 cent pineapple that we got from Kroger on there, but there wasn't enough room. So we switched that out for a couple of bananas to fill the tray with the strawberries. And then we found a couple of avocados that are a little bit past their peak to take up the rest of the space with our Keystone Turkey. And then I think it was about one and a half packs of dog food loaf. Everything we freeze-dried turned out perfectly. I was eager to rehydrate the dog food. As many of you may know, it's really important that we're putting away food for our four-legged family members, too. The price of cat and dog food is going up like crazy. The quality of the ingredients are going down. In fact, I've started making my own homemade dog food and freeze-drying it, but I just happen to have some of these that I bought from Fresh Pet. So it turned out perfectly. Give it four paws up. I got these two pound Star Kissed tuna packs from the clearance aisle at our Walmart Supercenter. And I think it was on sale for like $10. Corey thinks this was meant to be sold in a restaurant. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, because if you look at the, oh, you look at the recipes, recipes on the bag, it calls for like 25 of pounds of wasabi sliders, 28 yeah. pounds of tuna, and one of them's. Tuna quesadilla, 25 pounds. So how did so, these end up in Walmart? I think they must have got them in by accident or something. Oh, That's why yeah, they're on a reduced style. But anyway, you know, I had so. mi yeah, I had mixed emotions freeze drying this because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's flat. It has a long shelf life in the pantry. But we're going to go ahead and freeze dry this because once we open it, we're not going to be able to use this all at one time. So we are going to freeze dry and then make little separate servings. So that is going to go on our first tray. So next I got this can of diced green chilies at the Dollar Tree. So it's 28 ounces and there's no way I'll ever use this in a recipe. As much as we like these chilies, there's not a recipe out there that we can make that's going to call for this many uh, green chilies. So we are going to take that and then a can of diced tomatoes and make our own rotel on the freeze dryer. We got these gogurts and my daughter only likes the uh, bomb pop ones. She does not like the creamsicle ones. 
so she left all the creamsicle ones. I'm just going to make some more of those yogurt dots. We ended up needing to use two trays for this tuna. We made sure to use the tuna in water because if you use oil, it won't last as long on the shelf. We had some extra room, so we threw some of my watermelon on there. All right, guys, I'm going to just take my little watermelon juice here, add a little lime to it, and we are going to go put this... <laughs> We're going to go put this on the freeze dryer. Is that good, babe? Uh, the tuna was actually done probably in about 24 hours. But the watermelon took longer, so it took like another five or six. So all together was like 29 hours. So. See how easy it flakes apart? Tastes like tuna. This is so light and flaky. I like the yogurt dots. They're real crisp and airy. Kind of like if y'all have ever had those uh, dehydrated marshmallows. Queen Bee loves freeze-dried tuna. So on the first tray, we just put our green chilies and our tomatoes and mixed it together to make a rotel. And then Corey took these little bunt cakes and cut them into bite-sized pieces. I believe he cut them into sixths. That's hard to say. So on the third tray, he put the Thai mango sticky rice. We made sure these were completely dry, and now we're going to reconstitute them. I'm going to eat my cake as is, but Corey is going to taste test the Rotel, which he just rehydrated. It tastes very similar to biscotti, a cookie. I think taking these and dunking them in coffee would be really, really good the uh, rice pudding without being rehydrated and it tastes very similar to a, a Rice Krispie Treat. I'm gonna try to make some Fluffernutter Bites. Every time I see somebody do marshmallow on the freeze dryer it always expands and gets really really big. This is a actually like a white chocolate peanut butter spread. Now I know that peanut butter is not really something you want to freeze dry for long-term storage, but I got a feeling these things are going to get eaten pretty quick within the next few weeks. I also have strawberry marshmallow fluff. This may be the favorite thing I've done on my freeze dryer to date. Granted, fluffernutter bites are not necessary to survival to put in long-term storage. In fact, because of the high oil content, they're really not meant to be put in long-term storage. I was really worried that these would expand too much. I was impressed that they didn't explode in the freeze dryer. So first we're going to do the strawberry marshmallow fluff, which looks like this. It looks really good. The flavor is that of strawberry frosting. It's just airy. It melts in your mouth if you don't chew it. Kind of like cotton candy. That's what I would call, say it tastes the most like. Strawberry cotton candy. Fluffer nutter. If you've ever had any of those meringue bites, divinity almost. But it definitely has the, the fluffer nutter taste, which I absolutely adore. This tastes v exactly like the peanut butter ice cream that I freeze dry. So this was basically just three ingredients. The powdered peanut butter is not necessary. I just threw that in. But So technically two ingredients, the marshmallow fluff and the peanut butter. A foamy texture. It's so very good if you've ever had freeze dried ice cream and if you love peanut butter. Think you're gonna like this. We have been on a freeze drying frenzy lately, Corey, especially since he discovered the candy mode. And it just kind of take you through a bunch of different things that we've been making on the freeze dryer. You gotta work with different temperatures. Some things like the lemon heads, you have to bake in the oven first. Uh, it's just a whole process. I think these taste a lot better freeze dried. It enhances the tartness. These were Milk Duds Nerd Clusters. Look how pretty these are. Got our little labels, our little Mylar bags. We're gonna get some bigger ones because when the candy puffs up, you can only fit like nine pieces in. So the freeze-dried bit of honey looks like. 
So cool. What the Skittles will look like. Sort of bag of the hot chews. What I do today is make a breakfast a concoction with egg, potato, sage, sausage, green pepper, and onion. I'm gonna fry all this up. I'm gonna mix it up, let it cool, mix it up in a big old bowl, and we're gonna throw it on the freeze dryer. If you've ever bought one of those freeze-dried breakfast skillet meals, you know how expensive they are. These are some of the cheapest ingredients you can use, and a lot of them we have on hand already. Potatoes, eggs, sausage. You can season them how you want, add vegetables, leave vegetables out, and it's a lot better for you and cheaper. They're in 33 hours, but... That's because I set it for more time, because I knew it was going to go off in the middle of last night. Um, that's why you, it's no really set time and recipe for have, actually doing the freeze drying. Depends on your environment, depends on where your machine is. You know, it just depends on, you know, I set it for eight hours. If I know I'm going to be at work, eight extra eight hours, I know I'm going to be at work. So we're going to open the valve, let the pressure go, and then I'll we'll show you the finished product here in a minute. These turned out great. We just put them into individual serving Mylar bags. We've already taken some of these camping with us. They rehydrate beautifully and taste great. We just whipped up some raw egg and sliced up some ham. You have to be very careful when scooting liquid in because there's a lip at the back. So the eggs and the ham are done. See the eggs are really, really flaky. The ham, you know. It'll come apart just like styrofoam. So what I'm going to do with this is a little bit different. I'm not going to put this in mylar. I'm going to put this in uh, mason jars and vacuum seal the mason jars so we can actually use this product. So I'm going to stick all these in a baggie right now. I'm going to crush them all up, all these eggs. And then I'm going to dump them into a mason jar and I'll come back and show you the finished product. This freeze dried ham is so good. And I'm going to get Hazel to taste test. You like it? Next, we vacuum sealed the ham and the eggs in these mason jars. Next, I decided I wanted to freeze dry a smoothie. I had some fruit in the freezer that I need to use up. So I just blended that all together with some chia seeds, some nuts, some orange juice, and yogurt. Just like I would make my typical smoothie, I just pureed it. There wasn't enough smoothie to cover an entire second tray, so we tried pushing it aside so we could fit a banana on there. After 24 hours, this turned out perfectly. It was great munching on it on its own as a little snack, and we also reconstituted it with cold water, and it tasted delicious. We are going to do some cracker pizzas on the freeze dryer. We just assembled these crackers like little pizzas. We tried to bake them in the oven, but our oven went out for whatever reason, so we ended up having to put it on the smoker outside. And then once we let them cool off, we put them on the freeze dryer. Here is the finished product. We've got our saltine crackers with cheese and pepperoni. We tried freeze drying pickles before and they ended up turning into salt bombs. But when we did these cucumbers and seasoned them lightly, they were delicious. Next, we're going to be rehydrating some brisket queso. We just added a little bit of hot water at a time until we got it to the right consistency. And then we just let it sit and it was ready to test. This was a basic Rotel recipe. I put jalapenos and onions brisket and liquid smoke. It was awesome. Another plus to having a freeze dryer is on days like today when it's too hot to cook or turn your oven on, which by the way, our oven's currently not working because of a breaker went out on it or something. So it's good to have these backup plans. So we were able to just rehydrate some brisket queso. It's awesome cherries that I got from Aldi. I got some Reese's peanut butter cup yeah. and some Heath bars. Bananas or strawberries and then here's our little hot mess of different things. We got some grapes that taste like peaches. 
We've got an assortment of different uh, heirloom tomatoes. We've got a few raspberries. Uh, there's the maraschino-ish cherries. we got peanut butter cups, Rolos, Heath bars, strawberry starburst. It's, I guess it's known. I didn't see any videos on it, but there's condensation builds up here and drips. I guess there's a, a foam ring, insulation ring that Harvest Right will send you if you call them. I'm not sure. Other videos I saw where people just took uh, um, piping, piping insulation you know, and put it around there, put their seal back on and it cures the problem. So we'll work on that later. Shocker, something on the mystery tray exploded. Let's see what it is. What a hot mess. I think it was the milk duds that exploded, but I'm still trying to figure it out. Oh, it's a tomato. Wow. Mm, those are good. My That's raspberry good. has a Skittle attached to <laughs> Mm, that's really good. good. Raspberry <laughs> thumbs up. This is a fast drive-by taste test because he's got to go to work. What would you just do? Grape, grapes are good. Grapes are good. Where's the grapes? Man. I thought these were cherries. No, the cherries didn't turn out. Didn't, uh, it's, didn't. That's, it's the opposite. These are the grapes. Oh, it these is? are the cherries. Oh, okay. And the cherry has a skittle attached to it, too. Hold on. Um, oh, you know what? I think the cherries had a pit in them. They I just bit into them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, something or, or maybe they need to go a little bit longer. Now let me try the grapes that taste they're like peaches. Even, they're just soft. They're not even deep dry. No, see, that's the thing about doing a mystery tray. There may be things that need to freeze dry longer than other things. So, um, yeah, the grapes, they're good, but they're more like raisins i guess okay we did the raspberry did you do a skittle yet no i tried one let me see oh i'm not tasting different than regular skittle yeah they need to go longer yeah so um no, i'm gonna try starburst those actually no, try got harder yeah okay so no on that thing this was once a Rolo. Mm -hmm. It ain't pretty, but it tastes good. I like it. I don't know. What else is there? Mm. Was that yeah, everything? Yeah. So, yeah, when you do these mystery trays, like, the strawberry tray was all strawberries, banana tray, all bananas, but this, we put a hodgepodge of chocolate, tomatoes, just different things. Some things may needed to cook a little bit longer. I wanted to hop on here and do a voiceover. I think these video clips are out of order because in a previous video, we had discovered the candy setting on our freeze dryer, but at the time of this video, we did not. But I didn't want to edit it out because we are doing different taste tests and I wanted to make you aware in case you're wanting to freeze dry something like this. This is editing Kelly talking to past tense Kelly. I just realized I think I know what it is that blew up in the freeze dryer and I think it was the Reese's peanut butter cups. So I'm going back watching the video of all the things that we freeze dried and I'm like Yep, we made that. I tasted that. Yep, I tasted that. And then I was like, I didn't have a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. There was no Reese's Peanut Butter Cups on the tray. I think that's what blew up. So, anyway, do not make Reese's Peanut Butter Cups in your freeze dryer. <laughs> this is a hot mess. These are like Junior Mints around Christmas time. They were peppermint flavored instead of the spearmint. Mm. That's pretty good. Next, I did some coffee flavored candy. Mm, those are good. Good flavor. I love the flavor of coffee. But they're still a little bit harder than I would like. Believe it or not, these are Jolly Ranchers. But check these out. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Mm -hmm. This... 
is what freeze-dried candy should be. It's soft. I can bite down with my front teeth. Mm -hmm. Next, I wanted to try to do this Jello Cherry Cheesecake. It is a no-bake recipe kit. So I went ahead and just made it according to the package directions on the back. And I had some shelf-stable milk that I needed to use up. So I went ahead and used that. I added a little bit of brown sugar to my melted butter for the crust. Let's get this going. Y'all, this turned out so awesome. I call it my cheesecake brittle. It's delicious to grab as a snack to go. Love it. On this next tray, I wanted to do some yogurt bark, and I had all these random yogurts in the fridge that I needed to use. I had some strawberry shortcake granola that I wanted to use. I thought this would be a good grab-and-go breakfast that didn't really need rehydration. So I'm just putting a mixture of all kinds of different strawberry and vanilla yogurts. Some are smooth, some have fruit in them, and just putting my granola on top for a little parfait. This ended up being one of my favorite recipes that I've done on the freeze dryer. Tonight we're going to be making an easy chicken pot pie cobbler. And what makes it different uh, than a standard pot pie is instead of using a pie crust, we are going to be using this red lobster cheddar bay biscuit uh, as a crumble on the top. So you're, and this is actually an exciting recipe for us because the rotisserie chicken from Costco, this was the first thing we put on the freeze dryer. We use a half a cup of melted butter. Next we're going to add our freeze dried chicken. Okay, how much do we need? A cup. Fun fact, but the chicken broth that we canned that I'm using in this recipe is the same chicken broth from this chicken that we freeze dried. Alright, so next you're going to take a can of cream of whatever you want to use. I'm using a cream of chicken and mushroom. And I'm just going to dollop this uh, over the top. Whether you layer it or just mix it all together, it just doesn't matter. I'm just going to take my uh, can of drained mixed vegetables and just dump that. You're just going to season it according to your preferences, whatever it is that you like to put in a pot pie. I'm using some dehydrated onion, the garlic powder. So if you haven't had these red lobster biscuits, you're really missing out. This is going to be excellent on our pot pie here. So we're going to make this part according to the package directions. So we're going to put the biscuit mix into a bowl and where it calls for water, I'm just going to use chicken broth instead. You're going to just give this a good mix. And then the thing is, it's going to look a little funny, but because we're not making actual biscuits, but making that cobbler topping, we want it to be quite a bit thinner and runnier. So I'm going to take three-fourths of a cup of milk, and I'm just going to mix that in. This will make it a little more spreadable. You're going to take a half a cup of shredded cheese. So we baked it at 375 for about 50 minutes and look how beautiful that looks. So the next thing we're going to want to do is according to the back of the the box we need to add this herb dressing packet to some melted butter and then spread it on top. Mm -hmm. 
love Cheddar Bay Biscuits from Red Lobster. Mmm. Needs more butter. Yeah. I'm totally kidding. I think we use like at least a cup of butter. The cooking part took the longest because that was like 50 minutes or something. Yeah. But the throwing it together part, what was it, like under 10 minutes? Yeah. Special thanks to Angela with the Inquisitive Farm Life. I'm so grateful that she included me in this collaboration. Y'all don't forget to go check out her channel. That's the best place to go to get all the details of the giveaways, rules to participate in these drawings. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.